Hello everybody, first of all, happy holidays. I am here with a fan interview on the joyous occasion of all of our national official fan clubs joining together on one big platform called The Others. And uh, very exciting, all happened last year and we thought we'd uh, start this uh, new cooperation with a big international fan interview where every country had to hand in one question. So I've got the questions in front of me right now and I won't, um, without further ado, here is the very first question, which is a question from the Czech Republic. Uh, they'd like to congratulate us to our big anniversary and ask about the guests at our anniversary show in Paradiso. Well, since these questions were penned down a little while ago, um, in the meantime, we've already performed the gig. And people who were there know that we've had plenty of guests. Um, we had uh, Elisa Weiklitz there, Burton C. Bell, Liv Christine, George Oosthoek, but we also had some former band members. We had Rob van der Loo joining on stage. We had Sandu Zuur. And we also had Chris Eikens with us, who's been involved in writing all of the songs from the very beginning. Uh, next to that, we also had Eliana playing some beautiful cellos. So we had a stage full of wonderful guests. And I cannot wait until we can show it all to you on the DVD that will come out later this year. So um, that's for the Czech Republic. We continue with Italy. And they ask, in the 10 years of the lane, Thinking about our career, what are the most amazing memories that we have? Um, it's hard to pinpoint one, um, and also I think that for me, the, the the best moments are not necessarily the moments that are most attached to you know big successes or something. Um, it's really not about how many people are in the venues or about how many CDs we've sold. For me, it's probably most the sentimental value of certain things like big milestones like our 10th anniversary gig was very special um, also uh, you know getting to play certain stages that I used to go to as a kid to, wa uh, to watch certain shows hoping that I'd be up there one day and then making it um, those are always pretty magic moments and uh, yeah makes me um, feel like going back to my, my 15 year old self and telling her hey you know you did it <laughs> Um, so yeah, my moments are most about the, the, the sentimental value behind it. Um, and yeah, I think that the 10th anniversary is the most recent one. Um, France asked, do you have any specific preparations for the tour, like packing in stuff in a certain way or essential things you need to bring on tour? Um, for me, I guess it's mostly about making sure that I am uh, physically very prepared. Uh, so I... On the contrary of what I'm doing right now in the holidays, I am uh, working out a lot every day and I uh, eat very healthy, I drink loads of water, get plenty of sleep. It's all very, very boring, but also very necessary in order to um, be fit for the tour so that we can handle, you know, whatever fatigue or stress we run into. Uh, which hooks very nicely into Mexico's question. They ask, how do you deal? Uh, tour after tour with fatigue and stress and pressure. Um, yeah, for me, I mean, the, the, the best way to be kind of mentally prepared for that is to be, oh, there we go, is to be physically prepared. So, um, uh, pretty much the same thing as the previous question. And adding to that, I think that it's very important to kind of settle for the fact that some things will not go as you plan them. Settle for the fact that on a, on a expected things might happen um, I never really sleep when the bus is driving and I used to get very stressed about that because I thought if I don't get enough sleep I will not be able to perform right and um, at one point you know the stress about the sleep ruined more than the lack of sleep itself so I just settled for you know the fact that I probably won't sleep a lot on tour and I bring a lot of books with me and just the going with the flow and accepting that things happen the way they happen that actually helps uh, helps a lot for me um spain says one thing fans value the most besides the music of course is closeness to the band and we know that so from the beginning do you think you can keep this closeness with your constantly increasing fame um I, I, I certainly hope so. Like we've always really enjoyed hanging out with the fans. It's always been a very big part of, of the, the, the pleasure for us. Um, it has been this very close uh, close contact. And I do notice that um, 
as you know as the venues get bigger as the shows get bigger as the shows get longer that there's more and more challenges that allow us to do things like you know meeting up with fans every night um you know sometimes security doesn't allow sometimes there's you know health things that we have to take into consideration and you know take responsibility and dive right into our bunks and um these things happen and they happen more as the venues grow bigger and uh and uh, the, the consequences become bigger uh but but i hope that that will not change the the the, the closeness to the people who come to our shows and who have been supporting us all this time uh, i hope we can uh, keep up um yeah doing the things we always did because we genuinely really enjoy them then we have a question from portugal who say have you ever experienced a really creepy and or awkward fan situation one that make you rethink your closeness to the fans uh certainly we've had situations where um people did not really grasp the concept of personal space or privacy um, but it would be unfair to judge your entire uh, following you know all, all of the people who support you just for the misbehavior of a handful of people so um, that would not make me reconsider uh, the closeness to fans and um, I also think that you know keeping a good privacy and stuff from the beginning kind of prevents that at one point you have to take drastic measures to change things and fortunately we always uh, we've always done that so then we have the USA and they say for the first headline tour in the USA will members of the band still come out to greet fans at the merch counter as I said earlier we always really enjoy meeting fans uh, after the gigs um, and uh, that's also one of the reasons that we always make sure that our VIP sessions are more of an experience than just uh, a meet and greet so I'm certainly hoping that whenever security and times allow we can uh, come and say, say hi uh, we have a question from the Benelux curious to hear what the most memorable gift is that you received from fans during time with Elaine um, for me, I'm always very impressed when there's gigs where you can see that someone put in a lot of, um, you know, uh, personal care and effort and uh, certain gifts from actually the, the fan clubs come to mind uh, where a lot of people work together to make something really personal and memorable and that always warms my heart. Um, so that's, that's absolutely wonderful. You know, the biggest gift is that people come to the show as corny and cliche that might sound... Um, it is true um, Japan says we uh, all know the energy that the moon has on the earth and in us do you think this album in particular could bring different expectations and reactions in people when listening to the details of the songs um, I do think that moon bathers is kind of special in a way that the songs are very varied so um, when it comes to the reactions and emotional responses I think that uh, as there are so many different things themes and moods in the music I hope that it can take people through a, a very wide range of emotions throughout the album um, it would be wonderful if it did that uh, so yeah I can only hope so um, then we have Hungary and they ask why does the monarch have two verses in the booklet while only the first one sung in the song um, the, the lyrics on the monarchs were originally uh, a poem and it consisted out of those two verses and it was a part B to the words of uh, Chrysalis, Last Breath, which is also on the album Moonbathers. Um, even though we only chose to use the first verse uh, for the actual song because it just worked better with the music, I felt like in order to make uh, the story lyrically complete it would be very nice to incorporate uh, the second verse of the poem as well. And I no, that's kind of unorthodox to print something in the lyrics when it's not being sung, but I uh, felt like, hey, creative freedom, and included the second verse anyway, just because I really like the idea of it being there, of it being somewhere, and uh, of having that kind of closure to the two songs lyrically. So um, I, I realized that a lot of people noticed, uh, but it's not that something is miss missing on the album, it's there's just something extra um, in the lyrics. Then we have 
um, Norway. Um, he says, I am a very big fan of the Lucidity album, which I think is a very strong debut. I'm happy that there are still songs from the albums where you play live. What's your view on the album today? Um, I'm still very happy when I listen to the album. Uh, I, there is some parts about it which, of course, feel um, different today than they felt back then. Like, there, there's, there's a lot of lyrics uh, that 17-year-old me wrote that uh, 29 year old me would not necessarily write and of course my, my voice has changed a lot so I actually feel like it's another person on that album but um, I get great feelings of nostalgia and, and, and sentiment whenever I uh, listen to the album or when we play the song live and also I noticed that when we play them live they kind of develop with you because you get to interpret them every time that you play them live um, I um, I really like the album. It was the beginning of everything, you know. It was where we decided to make this a long-term thing. It was uh, the beginning of my co cooperation with Martijn and uh, it was just a very lovely time. It was a very exciting time and uh, I really like looking back on, on that particular era, which is also why I'm very excited about the re-release that we've done of the album just a few months ago. Um, yeah, it's uh, all, all, all great memories. Then there is United Kingdom. They say, if there was a track you could re-record from every album having the band you have now, what would they be? To be honest, like a lot of people ask me, like, would you ever re-record songs? Would you ever re-record like an album? And even though there is things that I would like technically do different or, you know, lyrics that I would adjust um, if I would write them today, I always feel like, you know, an album is a landmark in time and it represents the, the band that you were at that moment in time and I I would feel really bad about changing that. So I think that the only album where I could imagine changing anything is our latest one because it's still so fresh in my memory, you know, the things where I thought, oh, if only we had a little bit more time or we'd do this or that. Um, but I wouldn't go back and change anything from any of the albums because it would uh, mess with you know, the, the sentiment of the record too much. Sentiment is a word I use a lot. But I think that I can because of the 10 year anniversary and stuff, you know. Um, then we have a question from Poland. They ask, what's your favorite guilty pleasure song? And I think that it's probably I Will Always Love You by Dolly Parton. Uh, very sentimental too. Romania asks, what's the biggest perk of being a musician? And I think that uh, the, the biggest perk is definitely taking something that, you know, I really love to do and always love to do and, and making it a job is something that I feel very, very privileged for and I hope I can remain doing forever. Um, Germany says, uh, what time would you like to live if you, if you could travel through time is the final question. And my final answer to that is if I could travel to any place and time uh, in history I would probably go to Woodstock because I always loved watching the the, the um, uh, video footage of it and uh, I, I really loved the music and um, as a kid uh, watching it listening to it I always felt like I was born in the wrong decade so um, I would love to go back to that and experience that so that was the interview I hope uh, you enjoyed um, everyone's questions and um, I hope that we get to do uh, many more of these and have a wonderful platform with the others. Uh, thank you all very much for watching this. I know it's a very long, uh, long time of hearing me talk. I'm sorry for that. Um, I hope to see you all very soon again. Happy holidays, happy new year and uh, all the best to all of you. Bye bye. <laughs>